We're digging into a document called Empower All Your Business Areas with Hybrid Generative AI. Oh, interesting. Specifically, Chapter 7, Sales and Customer or Citizen Relationship. We're going to explore how to engineer predictable growth in this wild world of new sales tools and technologies. What do you think? Sounds fascinating. You've got some really interesting material here. This chapter really gets into how crucial, strong customer relationships are. Yeah. And really innovative sales strategies, especially now with all this rapidly evolving technology and, of course, the rise of generative AI. Right. It's like everything's changing so fast. Okay, so the chapter starts with this quote from Jeff Bezos about always improving the customer experience, which, I mean, that's pretty standard, right? Mm -hmm. But then it, it dives into this whole concept of predictable growth, and that's where things get really interesting to me. What's your take on this whole idea of engineering growth instead of just crossing your fingers and hoping it happens? True growth is strategic, not accidental. It's about really cultivating those long-term advantages right. and building a base of customers who don't just buy from you, but really become advocates for your brand. Mm -hmm. It's not about chasing those quick wins. It's about building something that lasts. Totally. They specifically mention Quidgist, the company behind this document, and how they focus on making growth a predictable outcome. It feels like they're positioning themselves as more of a growth partner rather than just a software provider. Absolutely. They're not just selling a product. They're selling a methodology, a way of thinking about growth that's completely intertwined with their software solutions. It's like they're saying, we'll give you the tools, but we'll also show you how to use them to achieve your goals. Exactly. Speaking of challenges, the document then digs into some of the major hurdles businesses are facing when it comes to, well, sales and customer relationships. Yeah. One thing that stood out to me was the need to be adaptable, you know, and data driven in this crazy digital environment. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, it's a critical point. The document really highlights the struggle to keep up with this constant influx of new technologies and ever changing consumer behaviors. We're talking virtual showrooms, AI powered sales assistants, gamified loyalty programs. It's a lot to keep track of. It really is. You finally feel like you've got a grip on the latest trends and then bam, there's a new platform or consumer behavior takes this unexpected turn. Exactly. It can feel like you're chasing your tail sometimes. But the document seems to argue that having a customized approach, particularly when it comes to CRM and sales software, can be a real game changer. Right. And they actually name drop some pretty big players as examples. Amazon, Alibaba, Tesla. These companies are leveraging custom software to gain a serious competitive edge. It's funny because we often think of these giants as having some secret sauce, but maybe it's as simple or complex, depending on how you look at it, as having software that's truly tailored to their unique needs and goals. Exactly. They're not trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. They're building the hole to perfectly match the shape of their business. And that level of customization can make all the difference. And this emphasis on customization feels like a natural segue into their discussion of, you guessed it, generative AI. What struck you about their take on generative AI? Well, what's fascinating is how they highlight its potential impact on both B2C and B2B processes. So for B2C, they talk about using AI to analyze those individual consumer behaviors and preferences, even with a massive customer base. Yeah, it's like having a team of data analysts working around the clock to figure out what makes each customer tick. Exactly. And that allows for incredibly personalized marketing and engagement. Right. And they specifically call out AI chatbots and their ability to handle a zillion customer inquiries instantly. I can definitely see how that would not only improve efficiency, but also provide that always-on availability that customers have come to expect in the digital age. It's about meeting those expectations in a world that's constantly connected, where oh. people want instant gratification. And it's not just about answering questions. It's about providing personalized recommendations, resolving issues before they even arise, and just creating these seamless, enjoyable interactions that really foster loyalty. For sure. They also highlight generative AI's ability to generate marketing copy and social media posts that are tailored to specific customer segments, which I imagine is a huge time saver for marketing teams. Absolutely. Especially those working with limited resources. It's about working smarter, not harder. Right. Instead of manually crafting messages for every single demographic, you can use AI to automate that process and ensure your content is actually resonating with the right people. Now, shifting gears a bit to B2B, the applications get even more wild. They're talking about AI analyzing business needs and compatibility to identify and qualify leads 
much faster than a human ever could. It's like having an AI assistant who's pre-screening potential clients, making sure the sales team is focusing on the most promising opportunities. It's like having a superpower. So you're <laughs> saying AI is doing all the heavy lifting, leaving the human touch for the parts of the process where it truly matters. Exactly. And they take it a step further with their whole discussion of AI-powered proposal creation, which I have to say, blew my mind a little bit. It's a game changer, especially for businesses dealing with those complex, often high stakes B2B proposals. Oh, absolutely. They're saying AI can create these tailored presentations based on the unique needs of each business client. That seems like a level of personalization that was unthinkable just a few years ago. It really is. No more generic pitch decks or spending hours trying to tailor a presentation to every single client. Right. AI can handle all that, mm -hmm. analyzing the client's needs, highlighting the company's strengths, and crafting a compelling narrative that speaks directly to their pain points and goals. And it's not just about making the presentation look pretty. They're talking about AI analyzing things like return on investment, which is often a major deciding factor in those big B2B deals. They're putting data behind their claims, demonstrating value in a concrete way. It's about moving beyond those vague promises and actually providing evidence-based solutions. AI can sift through mountains of data to identify the key insights that will resonate with decision makers, making the entire process more persuasive and effective. And this all ties back into their whole predictable growth concept, right? Absolutely. It's about taking out the guesswork, using data and AI to make informed decisions that get real results. They're not just hoping for the best, they're engineering a system that puts the odds in their favor, and they're giving other businesses the tools to do the same. What really struck me was how this approach could level the playing field. Even for smaller businesses, they're competing against these giant, well-established players. They highlight how AI can help smaller companies analyze markets and identify untapped opportunities, giving them an edge they might not otherwise have. It's like they're making those sophisticated sales and marketing strategies that were once only available to huge companies with massive budgets accessible to everyone. Now, even startups and smaller businesses can use these tools to compete and succeed. It's like giving everyone a fighting chance. But with all this talk about technology, it's important to remember that Quidgist doesn't see it as a replacement for human ingenuity and expertise. They're not saying, let the robots take over. Right. They still emphasize that human oversight creativity and relationship building skills are still absolutely essential for success. They talk about this idea of a human tech partnership where AI augments human capabilities, freeing us up to focus on the things that humans do best. Things like building relationships, understanding those nuanced situations, and coming up with creative solutions. It's like they're saying, let AI handle the repetitive tasks, the data right. analysis, all the heavy lifting. Right, right. You focus on the human element, the strategic thinking, the relationship building, the stuff AI can't replicate. Exactly. It's about playing to our strengths mm -hmm. and using technology to enhance, not replace, our unique abilities. The even go so far as to say that businesses shouldn't be afraid to challenge the status quo, to embrace what they call heterodox approaches. I love that. It's like they're encouraging this culture of experimentation and innovation, where businesses are constantly looking for new and better ways to connect with their customers and drive growth. It's refreshing. Instead of just trying to sell you something, they're encouraging a real mindset shift a willingness to think outside the box and explore new possibilities. They seem genuinely invested in helping businesses reach their full potential. But I'm wondering how they actually suggest putting these ideas into practice. They actually have a whole section where they give advice to different types of businesses. Well, let's hear it. Yeah. This is where the rubber beats the road. I'm really curious to see how they recommend using this stuff. They actually encourage businesses to reach out to their sales engineering team. Oh, interesting. Yeah, like for a brainstorming session, they're saying, let's figure this out together. I like that. So it's a collaborative approach. Exactly. They emphasize understanding what makes a business unique. Like, what's the market like? What channels are they using? What are they actually selling? It's about recognizing that what works for one business might not work for another. Right, it's not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. Exactly. They actually bring up those industry giants we talked about, Amazon, Alibaba, Tesla, and they argue that these companies understood the power of custom software, especially in sales. They built systems that fit perfectly with their business models. So Quidgist is like the bridge between those off-the-shelf solutions and the super customized systems used by the big players. Right. They're all about capturing what makes each business special and using that to unlock growth. 
It's like they're saying, we can help you build your own Amazon level sales engine. Exactly. And they even say that it's super important to involve salespeople in the process of building these custom CRM systems. Makes sense. After all, they're the ones on the front lines talking to customers every day. Exactly. They know what works and what doesn't. They even mentioned some HuffPot research about AI freeing up a ton of time for salespeople by automating those repetitive tasks. Oh yeah, like two hours a day. Two hours. Imagine what you could do with two extra hours in your workday. Right. That's two hours to focus on building relationships, closing deals, all those things that require a human touch. So to wrap this up, it seems like Quigis is all about taking a more strategic, data-driven approach to sales. Absolutely. They want businesses to see technology as a secret weapon, something that can help them achieve predictable growth. Any final thoughts for our listeners who are trying to navigate this crazy world of sales? You know, the biggest thing is to remember that sales isn't about pushing products anymore. It's about building those real relationships, understanding your customers, and creating amazing experiences. Technology can definitely help, but it's not a magic bullet. It takes work and a willingness to adapt and learn. I think that's a perfect note to end on. The future of sales is full of possibilities, but it's up to each business to embrace the right tools and strategies. Definitely.